coming up on the online trainer show. I mean, the name is something your people will immediately, it's language that your people already use. It -hmm. identifies exactly who it's for working moms. It's sanctuary is like a place of peace. Like I love how you're kind of like hot mess, but like, this is a place of peace. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I, I love how you did that. And then it, it, it goes brilliantly into your, signature program and same name. So do you see everybody listening, just how that all works together? Hello, and welcome to the Online Trainer Show, where we make sense of the online fitness world and help you build your online fitness business and your dream life and have some fun while you're doing it. I'm Jonathan Goodman, one of your co-hosts, and I'm excited that you're here. Thanks for listening. This podcast is made possible by viewers like you, except you're not viewers, you're listeners. Um, Okay, well, I guess a word from our sponsors. You know, we started our online fitness business a couple weeks ago. And uh, as as the leaders in online fitness uh, business education for a lot of years, we got to know all of the software companies inside and out. We have been working with them. I've been an advisor. I've advised basically every major software company. And so when it came time for us to build our system, you know, I wanted to, to choose the one that we were going to work with, the software program that we were going to work with. That was going to be the right combination of ease of use. Um, we're going to onboard a lot of coaches very quickly to work with our clients. You know, we brought on five at the beginning, but we wanted to build a system where we could bring on a lot of coaches. So um, very, very quickly. So it had to be really easy, easy to use, had to have the right kind of automation, had to have the data that we uh, needed in there, had to have an Android app and an EOS app. And, uh, and so we decided to use PT Distinction. Um, and, and that's not just because you know, they were, they were the sponsors for our show. We decided to use them after looking at all the options for what we needed the best and um, really, really have been loving them so far. So I can't recommend PT Distinction enough uh, if you're looking for online training software. And normally they give a 30-day trial fee to check out the system. Um, but what they've done special for us and, and listeners of the show, so that's you, is giving you guys a 60-day trial. So basically double the trial period, really to make sure you love them. And one of the things I love about that is it's not like a coupon code. It's nothing right? Like they're putting skin in the game. Like they're basically willing to let you try out everything they have for free for 60 days, knowing that you're going to love it so that you keep using it. And that to me is a testament to just their own belief in the quality of their system. Um, and that's one of the things that I really look for. But I want to kick it to Ren for a second. Ren, um, you're one of our coaches in online trainer coaching. Yep. And, uh, and so you just started using the system what, yep. two weeks ago and got in there. So um, how are you finding it so far, man? You know, it's um, it, it's very much like uh, like a like a pair of shoes for a kid. You know, you can grow into it. What I love about it is how simple it is at the how front end. How did you end. just come up with that? Yeah, I just I, I just that made that up. The, well, that is the best <laughs> analogy that I think. Like like that analogy was so perfect it, it for was what perfect. you're talking about. And I and I know you just came up with that on the spot. I, I did, you know, amazing. but, but it is, it is, you know, you, you grow into it. So <laughs> it, it works at every level is what I'm finding out because I'm a little bit more complex as a trainer. I've been online training for a while. So I've, I've been around, I've been around the block as they say. And uh, one great thing about PT distinction is it can go from simplicity to sort of explicit detail in a mm-hmm. short amount of time. Um, if you need more detail, if you're expert at programming, PT Distinction makes sense for you. If you're new to programming, PT Distinction is great for you. He's got a great library. So I love the fact that it will, it will sort of grow along with your training business. That's one of my, what's one of my favorite things about it so far, having engaged with it for only a a few weeks. So, you know, I got to say, normally I don't support your choices, Jonathan. We all know that. Uh, But in this case, (laughs) I'm willing to say possibly that you didn't make an error. There you go. I mean, that's fantastic. So guys, if you're listening and you want to get going with, with that deal, special deal for PT Distinction, um, you can go to the show notes for this episode or just go straight to onlinetrainer.com slash PTD. And uh, you'll see there there's coupon code. Just enter it in when you check out and you'll get the 60 days to check it out. So the Online Trainer Show, not sure if you guys know, is actually produced by the same people who created the Online Trainer Academy. Um, I'm the founder of it. All of us are graduates for it. Ren um, and Carolina, you guys are both actually level two certified. Is that right? Correct. We're, we're a big deal. You guys big have been deal. hanging around for, for a few years in our yeah. communities. I feel old. And 
<laughs> Young and hard. And one of the things that I'm most proud of with the Online Trainer Academy, I mean, it's not the fact that it was the first ever textbook for the subject, still the only textbook, the only real curriculum that exists for online training and that we've, you know, we have worked with more people um, than, than anybody else. We're at 30, 35,000 or something people that we've worked with in, in 87 countries. So we know what we do works. It's, it's actually the longevity of the success of people in the program. And that's something I'm super proud of because the methods that we teach are, are agnostic. You know, they don't fall prey to changes in algorithms. We don't teach you necessarily how to leverage like the newest, hottest software, social media, whatever it is. What we do is we we empower you and and we teach you strategies to actually jump on and and understand what the foundational principles are for success. You know, what are what are the skills that you need to up level to be a successful online trainer? You know, we're talking everything from obviously your marketing skills, your business development skills to your your client skills, you know, motivational interview and how do you assess clients online? How do you take care of your clients well? Because even if I could help you get more clients, if you can't take care of them and get them good results, then, um, you know, not much as good is going to happen and you're going to have to keep reinventing the wheel and that's straight up exhausting and, and you're destined to fail. And that's one of the things that I'm most proud of, that our community has been around and continues to grow. I mean, we've been around for eight years. You can't have an educational course that's been around for eight years in a platform that changes as much as the internet does and not really have struck on some very important fundamental foundational principles that are, are wildly accessible. And, um, and so if you guys are interested in that, um, I encourage you to check out the Online Trainer Academy. We produce this podcast and, uh, and, and we've been around for a while. We're going to be around for a lot longer. And we'd love for you to join us. If you just go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy, then, uh, then we will take great care of you. And uh, we do, of course, have a guarantee. And we guarantee everything that we do as well. So there's no risk. So check it out. Onlinetrainer.com slash academy. Ren, get on with the show, my friend. This is the Online Trainer Show. Trainer Show. Trainer Show. This is the Online Trainer Show. We shouldn't have a podcast. No, right? There we go. <laughs> never that is definitely what it is. Never been drunk, so I don't know. <laughs> Me either. Some trouble focusing the more, on you. The more I drink, the better you'll look. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I am very proud of myself that I have never once been drunk while recording this podcast. Just so you know, in thank case, you so much for that. Kettle. In case if there was ever a question, in case you were like, "Is she drunk right now?" No, I've been sober <laughs> you know, the whole time. The whole time. level of discipline here has been otherworldly from the start. Yes, stuff. thank you for recognizing that. You got your purple Hulk so juice today. You do your mango dragon fruit. 700 milligrams no no to, I, I didn't have time today so it's just oh, coke okay. zero. Mm-hmm. all right coke zero all right nope, nope. doesn't this thing want to focus on me i'm yeah, having we, camera difficulties on the podcast everybody we, we are nobody we wants want to, to focus, focus on, on you, you. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna delay the start of the podcast because my camera <laughs> isn't working does that make sense it's, it's it makes as much sense as turning down the radio when you're looking for a house yeah, uh, and yet we all do. And yet we all do it. This is really weird. Yeah, it won't focus. It is on. really weird. I'm trying to move I, I'm oh, uncomfortable. There, there? No? uncomfortable. Yeah, there we go. We got it. We got it. Nice. Okay. I didn't. I didn't like that. What Have episode? We started? Episode thirty-six, I believe. Hello, and welcome to the Online Trainer Show. Today is episode thirty-six, and we are talking about Facebook group secrets. I've got a lot of notes today, and I'm in focus, so we're basically winning. Thanks for being here. Topic, like I normally don't know the topic, but I'm excited <laughs> about this topic because I've been giving away some Facebook group secrets to OTA students. Um, mm. You know, so I think I may have a quote this week. I feel which like it's one of those things that a lot of people try to do and very few people really do well. And it's because yeah. like, there's a lot of kind of fine details to it. It's like, you can't just build a Facebook. I mean, ain't nobody needs another Facebook group, right? But if you create a Facebook group that people actually want to be in, uh, it doesn't have to be big yeah. and it can be really, really, really great lead generator and conversion tool, but it has to be positioned, named properly. Some stuff with the setup should be done right. And then of course you need a way to get people in there on an ongoing basis. And then you need a way to convert people out of there. 
into clients. And so, yeah, we're going to be talking about all of this stuff, but usually people are like, Oh, I'm creating a Facebook group. Why is nobody buying? It's like, cause you've literally never asked them. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this, but this is actually the segment of the podcast um, officially titled "Who Ends Nonsense." So, uh, and I'm so I'm so pleased by that. Like, <laughs> now we have a name for it now. Yeah. So, so for people that don't get the get the privilege, the deep privilege of seeing what goes on behind the scenes. Well, first, it's not very much different than what goes on in front of the scenes, but there's <laughs> other behind the scenes things that you guys will see. So as we were working out the format of the show, there's an official segment called Ren's Nonsense. Uh, and I was just really pleased by that. Um, I don't know what to call I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on my special segment called Carol's Cackle. So. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Please get on. <laughs> or is it, or is the the one listener referred to you as the female step into the, the female <laughs> step out of the dark ages there uh mr cleaver uh we don't we don't say things like that these days you know get, get your pc together i'm watching the love boat last night because you guys know i love 80s you love the love boat it, it's love first of all boat. it's a great show it's a great business lesson um you know but so i'm watching last night and Isaac has, Isaac is the bartender. Isaac's the black guy for you guys out there. Look, <laughs> hey, knows how to, and it is what it is. I don't, I don't fault the love boat for their, for their format. Aaron Spelling, you know, legendary TV producer, father of Tori Spelling. I have of, legitimately oh zero gosh. clue what you're talking about. That's, that's oh, all right, John. I know, I know who he is. Child of the 90s here. Thank I know who he is. Beverly Hills, 90210, Melrose Place. That's right. That's him. right. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. You know, I never Jonathan, watched where, any of these things. Where have you been, Jonathan? You know, step into the 90s um, first. And then I was we'll like get you to step playing into the sports 2000s. poorly back then, I guess. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> you and Excalibur and Excalibris on the, on the <laughs> hockey field or whatever you're doing. Your name, yeah. hockey stick. No, that was the 2000s. The 2000s, I was pretty good at, at ball hockey. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but in the 90s, I was not good at anything. Yeah. N n never name your ball hockey stick for, for the listeners out there. It's just weird. <laughs> don't even say ball hockey stick, as a matter of fact. Don't even, don't even. <laughs> I'm watching The Love Boat, and it's a great episode. Isaac has an affair with a pop singer. Um, yeah, it was, it was an awesome episode. But that's not what I want to talk about. Did you know The Love Boat uh, marketing Lesson, did, did you realize that the marketing piece to the love boat sort of launched the cruise industry? Did you guys know this story? No. Quick story. It's, yeah, it's a true story. So in the, uh, in, I think it's J Japanese, Japanese cruise liner called Pacific Princess. And at this time, late 70s, early 80s, people weren't really taking cruises like that. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a thing that people did. I feel like that's so, the most obvious name ever for a Japanese cruise liner. Yeah, yeah. Pacific Princess. Pacific, like, like name <laughs> it, that's just like 10 guys sitting around a table like, what are we going to call this? Yeah, I Pacific Princess. Thinking about Princess. all these creative names, they're like, well, we live in the Pacific. Hmm. It's like me wearing a t-shirt that says Black Dude. So Pacific <laughs> Princess, <laughs> there weren't many people selling. So Aaron Spelling, the 90210 creator, father of Tori Spelling, who was on 90210. Thank you, Keto. Uh, he, he said, hey, can we use the name of your cruise ship line? That way we can get some live shots for the show. It was really filmed on the studio. And lo and behold, that, that show got so popular, The Love Boat, that people started taking cruises on the Pacific Princess. What? Yeah. And then the Pacific Princess came to like Hawaii or something like that. Because cruise ships, they, you know, they have different launch ports mm -hmm. that they have. Of Pacific course. Princess I'm was familiar like, with the industry. What, yeah, what, whatever, whatever the term is. I don't, I don't do terminology here, Jonathan. I just, this is the nonsense part of the show. Leave me alone. So, but, but this company was about to go under. Like the cruise, the love boat legitimately saved not only Pacific Princess, the actual cruise line, it's, it saved and launched the cruise industry. So any of you that have cruised within the last several years, this year notwithstanding, stay away from COVID, um, you have the love boat to thank. For any cruise memories that you have, your children that were quote unquote souvenirs of the trip, uh, all of that can be attributed to Captain Steubing, Isaac, Gopher, Doc, and Julie from the Love Boat. You're welcome. Wow. I just I just dropped the marketing lesson that was so boss. People years from now will not remember how they won't know how boss it is. This will age well. That's all I'm saying. People will not remember the podcast. Don't they will don't not be like that, Jonathan. Uh, this will, this will be the most well-aged 
podcast episode that we've ever had, people look <laughs> back to this and say, we did not realize the level of genius that we were interacting with, with Ren Jones at the point where he dropped that lesson. But now we know it. Kettle, what's going on in your world? Have you taken a cruise before? You ever been on a cruise, Kettle? I've never been on a cruise. And no? I think I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't necessarily didn't. feel like I want to be in a cruise. So okay, I'm cool with that. Be, be that way. Canadians are, <laughs> Canadians are uppity. Uh, Amber, you've done. It. Have you done a cruise, Amber? No, I'm no. Only... I'm afraid of open water, so big no. Oh, yeah, you'll, yeah, you want to stay away from that? Like, yeah. Well, you guys are a downer. I was, I was expecting <laughs> to hear, hear all this, all these great cruise stories from you guys, and I love it. But nothing, Kettle. What's up with you? My, my story tanks today. Thanks. Um, thanks. Your thanks story to the rest was fantastic. No, I am very wasn't. distracted because I am still surrounded by kids. You know, crap. Yeah. And I, like, I, yeah, I, just whatever costumes. Logged on, Keto was dressed like a triceratops. Yes, uh, which was, and now, yeah. What was that? what was that? My new mascot. What was the name that you gave it? Tricera. Triceratops. <laughs> uh, <what's laughs> yes, your, tri- your, if any fan art, if anybody, if anybody has a fan Please. art of a triceratops <laughs> holding, eating, or partaking in any way in tacos. Or like or part taco, shell. part yeah. triceratops. Yeah. I don't know, but this needs to happen. S- send that to Amber. What's 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 your email, Amber? Amber at the PTOC. PTDC.com. Amber, Amber at, at PTDC.com. PTDC. That's also where you send her requests for boobs. Yeah, for for you, yeah, yeah. Topless <laughs> requests and feet pics. Feet pics, topless requests, and triceratops <laughs> imagery can be sent to amber at ptdt.com. You're welcome. Jonathan, what's up with you? You got a topic today. You're going to teach us stuff. We're excited about it. How you feeling? You look exhausted, man. Are you okay? What you are things? <laughs> yeah, you man, look like, really run down. You, know, you, look a a, you look a little run down. Like you're I'm a little, little bit today. Like if I saw you on the street, end. I'd probably cross it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Look workout, a little. My workout did me in, to be honest. Did it, today, yeah, yeah. Uh, just before, yeah, man. Um, Rough around the edges today, Jonathan. Oh, I'm getting. Yeah, I'm getting beaten up. Um, I want to know why, out of all of the TV that exists in the world in all of history, you <laughs> decided to watch you and episodes of The Love Boat. It's so, it's so good. You know, it's so good. Like last night, one of the leading ladies. I found out she was a mom in one of uh, in a Ben Stiller movie. Along came Polly. It had Ben Stiller and um, Jennifer Aniston. And how did that impact your life in any meaningful way? Well, then I, obviously I went back and watched Along Came Polly because oh, I was I like, see. I've ah. seen this lady before. Uh-huh. I'm a big IMBD guy. Like I like to go. I see an actor. I find out what their name is. I go to IMBD and I track down all the things they've ever done. <laughs> And then okay. occasionally I'll go back and I'll watch one of the things. And it was, it was awesome. Along came Paul is a great romantic comedy movie. Um, okay. You know, so. I, so you're just moving I'm, backwards, basically. You're just doing six degrees, Kevin Bacon. Pretty, pretty much yeah. in, in reverse. <laughs> I'm reverse engineering six degrees of Kevin Bacon. That's what I'm doing. And that's, that's how I pass my time when I'm not on the, on the OT on, online trainer show. I reverse engineer um, things like that. So. So Jonathan, you're you're a bit haggard today. You're a little rough around the edges. Oh, I'm good. On the I'm, just, bus. I'm I'm sorry. You know what it is. Uh, we we've spoken about this before. So I'm I'm a client in our online trainer coaching. Yeah. And uh, last week was uh, volume ramp up week. Um, mm. And an extra set, I'll tell you, across the board is no yeah. joke. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that, that's been, that's, it's, it's hard. So I come, I do this podcast right after my workout all the time. Yeah. My workouts are always sort of 11.45 to one. And then I try to knock down some food as fast as I can. And, uh, and today was, was legs and shoulders. And so instead of three sets, it's four sets. Uh, yeah. And, and that's just kind of haggard me. It shows you uh, everything that us trainers like to talk about a lot. Um, but rarely do like progressive mm-hmm. overload, like actual yep. proper progressive overload. <laughs> right. um, a lot of trainers love to talk about it, but very few trainers actually know how to appropriately program it in. But when you do, and when you experience it, you're like, yo, this is no joke. It's, it's a monster. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, but um, I haven't shaved in, in a while. It's because um, lifting my arm to shave. Yeah. Is, yeah. 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 So I'm just going <laughs> to. 
I'm yeah, just going to get some time to, to go into the barber shop and just get somebody else to shave me. I, think. Yeah, I was you, about to say, He's man, got the you, T-Rex you arms. Like, right, the little T-Rex. Right. <laughs> just Sarah Tuckle Top's arms. You know, it, it looks... Look, looks like you haven't been on the Golden Throne, the the Valhalla of barbering recently, because you're so rugged. But I like the rugged That's look. Right. I mean, he's got like, see, he's got like the messy, sexy look, right? Like, you know, That's right. kind of, kind of cool, kind of, you know, call the authorities type. type of <laughs> like it. I so like you it. would. So, so what you're saying is that if you saw me on the street, you would think about whether you'd stay on the same side. Yeah, of the absolutely, street as me. absolutely. You're, yeah. you're just. A bit to my sketchometer, like you're sort of off of it right now. He's a bit too sketch for me. I don't know what might go down. Good. You know. <laughs> Let's keep talking about our appearances on this podcast. <laughs> right. On, on, this, podcast on this audio production. Can... So Amber's going to have this as dog month. <laughs> she, she is. She is. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> walking, walking the shoulders. Of course, uh, the belts are out, as, as always. And she's popping them as we're. As we're ish, so, ish. <laughs> <laughs> Cuts everything down to spaghetti straps. That's what she does. <laughs> she was like, Do you have anything with thinner straps? <laughs> Stop flexing, Amber. It's embarrassing. You're making us look bad on audio. Um, so, <laughs> so, Jonathan, we're talking about groups today. I we love are. this conversation. Yes. Now, I thought I was going to be able to interject and offer some insight, but the type of group stuff you're talking about, I, I don't think I know much about. No, that. I mean, you do. You do. We talk about this a lot in OTA, too. I mean, the thing with, with, with Level 2 of the Online Training Academy is we go deep into um, groups and communities. It doesn't necessarily have to be Facebook, although it usually is. And not everybody does it, depending on their business structure. But um, generally, the, the structure that we, that we teach there is... Um, gathering leads from wherever you're gathering them and getting them onto an email list, but also gathering them onto a group mm -hmm. and uh, doing the majority of your conversion actually out of that group. And so um, as opposed to trying to convert people straight from social media, basically you, you get them first into your community. Um, and then out of your community is where you convert them. So it's a much nicer way to engage people leads. It's much warmer. Um, of course, inside your group, you're going to have clients and non-clients. You're going to be able to uh, do lives and interviews and stuff like that with your clients, share their successes, and then people are going to see that over years. Right. And, um, and eventually convert. I mean, this is like, you look at Online Trainers Unite, a Facebook group for online trainers. Uh, there are people who have been in there for three years who have seen, I mean, probably 500 messages about OTA at this point. Right. right? Yeah. And, uh, and then when they're ready, right, they do it. And we don't, we don't do a lot of like straight converting out of that group simply because it's just too big um, mm -hmm. to really do it. We have to be, we're, we're in a very interesting, fortunate yet uh, interesting situation where we actually have to stop ourselves from doing some of the stuff that we teach because we wouldn't be able to maintain the level of quality mm -hmm. if, if we did it. Like we cannot put out a call saying, Hey, if you're interested in OTA book a call to talk to us. Right. The because we have a thousand be too calls. Insane. Booked, right. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we just, we just can't do that. Uh, so we have to, we have to approach it different ways. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to talk about, a lot of the actual secrets um, around naming and positioning the group, getting people in, um, converting people right off the bat from when they are entering into your group, mm -hmm. which is which is pretty neat. I'll talk to you about that. And then um, creating appropriate, uh, creating sort of a curriculum with your posts, which allows you to formulate your content production or hire out your content production, talk about delegation, and, and creating appropriate uh, expectancy so people kind of know what to expect and when to check in and stuff like that and then uh having calls to action throughout the month mm -hmm. to get people to put up their hand so i think i think when you do an amazing job with this with your group what you do a lot is you go you go live and you do videos and, yeah and I, I love i love to do the videos i'm i'm a video guy you know that's mm -hmm. that's that's what i like to do i think um I think the key to me was sort of, you know, I, you know, you want something sort of special to be about your group. So I have gone from the point of doing lives, broadcasts in other places to almost sort of exclusively doing it in my group. I think that's like a, it's like a bonus, you know, for mm -hmm. being in the group. 
you know, he, here you get to watch me talk. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> type what, a of, privilege. Type, type, what, a, what a privilege you know, how, what a privilege. <laughs> how lucky can one group get you get to watch me ramble about things um but yeah you know i mean all i had to do was pay you a couple of loonies to do it right, right just a few loonies <laughs> you know, no, it's not it's not that expensive i just oh. want some money for the bubble gum machine ultimately is what drives my business <laughs> bubble <laughs> bubble gum machine money um, but yeah, you know, I, I like the group stuff. Like it's, it's a group in terms of Facebook. So, and marketing so let's talk about stuff. naming and positioning. And then I want to talk to you guys, cause I'll feel you if you have groups. I want to talk to you about the names of we your do. groups as we well do. and kind of how you position them. The most important thing when you're naming and positioning a group is, is, is twofold. One is it has to align with your, with your 1% with your niche, but more specifically, it has to immediately lead to the premium version of your product that you're selling. And so it's very hard to do like John's fitness community, right? Your group needs to be some sort of a gathering place that is either a, a community or a celebration around a certain topic and that topic mm-hmm. needs to uh, needs to really work synergistically with what your premium program is. So if you pay attention to the PTDC, we have two Facebook groups. Right? One is Online Trainers Unite, one is Fit Pros Unite. The reason for that is we kind of have two arms to the business. So we created two groups, right? One for one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we've been very specific. Like you talk about in-person training in one, you talk about online training in the other one. Um, so as you do your group, I'm not saying that you necessarily need to, but what you name your group and particularly how you position your group should be celebrating the people who are looking to succeed with your premium program. Mm-hmm. And then the name should, should lead into that. So this is the idea of like online trainers unite. It's kind of like, we, I call it a rally cry. It's kind of a rally cry mm-hmm. term like, Hey, online trainers, let's celebrate ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about your, your three groups though. Um, Amber, why don't you go first? What's your group called? Yay. Uh, my group is called hot mess working mom sanctuary. Yes. So why did you choose that name? Um, so for my demographic specifically working moms, but like we're a little bit of a hot mess. Like we feel overwhelmed with everything and it's kind of a, self-deprecating group and they proudly identify <laughs> as you know being a hot mess um and then kind of going back what you're talking about it leading into the paid you know group my 12-week program is hot mess to hot mama blueprint mm-hmm. so it works together that way um but yeah that's the, so it's the name. i mean the name is something your people will immediately it's language that your people already use it mm-hmm. identifies right. exactly who it's for working moms it's sanctuary is like a place of peace. Like, I love how you're kind of like hot mess, but like, this is a place of peace. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I love how you do that. And then it, it, it goes brilliantly into your signature program and same name. So do you see everybody listening, just how that all works together? Right. And how easy it is as somebody entering in to identify that it all works together. It's brilliant. Um, Carol. Mine, my group is the Badass Body Sisterhood. And same, it's sisterhood was very much like, I actually put out a poll like, hey, which name do you prefer for my group? Which is a great way to get people excited about your group coming up. And uh, most women were like, the word sisterhood has to be in it. Like everybody identified, Mm -hmm. everybody who was in my niche identified Mm -hmm. with that need for women to support women, women coming together, women uniting, women working together, all of this. And um, badass, uh, the, the word badass was very intentional because the women that I work with are tend to be 40 and above and they are highly successful women like they are type a personalities that have you know they they're very successful in their career so they know like in many ways they feel like a badass and um yeah and so we celebrate all bodies like it's not about what your body is shaped like or how much weight you lost it's like you have a badass body because you're here and you dance and you jump and you were in zip lining in costa rica like that's badass and you're a badass and so that's kind of like our our, our, our war cry I've, I've been zip lining in costa rica i would not recommend it it's of very course, sketchy yeah. <laughs> of, course, of course you've been zip lining in of course in the second I'll i said it i'm like I'll, jonathan is I'll, gonna I'll, have a story right right <laughs> is, so zip lining in costa rica where we were <laughs> 
20 minutes outside in Osara is um, actually the longest zip line oh my God. that I can't remember. The, it's, it's one of the longest in the world, but it's the longest in South Central America, I think it is. And it's like legit pretty sketchy. I mean, you're, you're, you're going down the zip line, you're like, wee, this is fun. And then you look up at that like little metal piece that's keeping you alive. And it's like rattling and, <laughs> and it's like, it's like rusted and rattling. You're like, I don't know if I trust this to not take the part. And then you're like, ooh, a monkey. And then, and then you look up again. <laughs> you're like, I'm going to hike down. This um, reminds me of when I went to Mexico with a bunch of girlfriends for, for a bachelorette. And we went to one of those like eco adventure parks. And it's like, right. Zane, you're doing like zip lining and stuff like that. And then when we pay our, you know, the money to get in, uh, all of them were Canadian. And they're all like, where's the waiver? Where do we sign the oh, waiver? Yeah. Oh, and I'm like, no child, <laughs> wait, this is Mexico here. Something happens to you, that's on you. And you ain't suing nobody for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, good luck. Good luck suing us. And then I'm like, oh yeah, thanks for the helmet. That's really good. <laughs> Um, it was so cute. So yeah. I love, I love, you know, I love the difference between your two groups' names. Oh my god! Because they're both for powerful women. Oh. But think about the nuance. Like Carolina is about like hardworking, like like super successful professional women. Maybe moms, maybe not. Right. Whereas mm-hmm. Amber's is still for like hardworking, like like super strong women, but they identify differently. Mm-hmm. like the word badass versus the word hot mess like they it, these are these are two groups that are very similar and probably has some crossover in people but they yep. identify differently and you've been able to really dial down on that which is which is rad um when uh the the kettle do her her your client group did you get- but the client group is that the 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 badass body uh, oh, sisterhood, oh, gotcha. and the my signature program is the badass body blueprint. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. which is like the guide to get Damn. your badass body, whatever it's that looks even like better. for you. It's almost like you guys um, really worked on these names <laughs> and this process. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's almost like we were guiding by a team. We were guided by a team of professionals, like, right? Like, Who helped us narrow this it's down. Almost, it's almost like it's almost like. Uh, you guys have been through the online yeah. trainer academy levels one and two to really yeah. Um, almost yeah yeah I don't <laughs> some some sketchy book writer some some vagabond book writer guided us through Dave something like that uh, so, something something to that effect um, What's so, your so mine is lean in and lean out that's my uh, that's mm. my my general group um, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, so I did the same thing Keto did through. Talk about who your clients are. Uh, oh, I coach moms over thirty. You know, basically mm-hmm. moms over thirty. So the word "lean in" is great because of mm-hmm. Cheryl Sandberg's book. Absolutely, and how much that association that is. You're kind of Absolutely. piggybacking off of that. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and I did. I did the same way Keto did it. I I put out the poll, and by far, the the lean in and lean out was you know major. So. Mm-hmm. You know, but that makes sense for me because my my program is drop two sizes program. So it is literally about that, which is, you know, which was a conflict for me. It's not the only way that you can approach fitness as a woman, but the people that come to me, that's what they yeah, do. Yeah, that's what so they want. And that's fine. We, we yeah. take them the way to get way we get them. And then my my mm-hmm. um, my um, my client group is world's greatest moms. Um, so Aww. my, my, my no tank, yeah, my tank tops that I've, that I sell, you know, every, every year are called world's greatest, world's greatest tank. So, uh, so world's <laughs> greatest moms is, a, That's is awesome. a, obviously I had the world's greatest mom. I mean, you guys have met me. Uh, that's easy to, that's easy to determine. Uh, so yeah, so that worked out well for, for my, um, for my group, tying it all in. It is like, there's almost a method. It's almost like we have some type of system, right? We're doing it. It's just spooky. So I hope I hope you guys listening have gotten a bit of an idea on the names and how this kind of works out in the positioning and the final part of the naming and the positioning because I think it's really really important to get it right. Is you want a place that people are going to want to talk about that they're a part of. Yeah. And um, you don't want a name like how to get in shape or like you don't want a name that connotes that you have a problem that you're trying to fix because nobody's going to want to talk about how they're a part of it. Right. Even if it accurately represents the problem, nobody's going to want to talk, which means you're immediately cutting yourself off at the hips. 
in terms of your promotional ability of no word of mouth was all three of these names are celebrating the people who are in them and then there's a lot of organic growth as well people like talking about it people like talking that they're a part of it people invite their friends into it that they want to include and and that's a major major part of how groups grow there are what i'm going to talk about now is how to get people into the group and i'm going to talk about how to basically uh uh you know shotgun it out of out of out of a cannon to start but the the truth is if you set it up properly with the naming and the positioning and you're adding appropriate value in there, it will grow organically. And part of the naming and positioning, by the way, happens in how you like set it up in Facebook and how you could set group. If you go into the settings, you set group tags, you can set the, um, the permalink for your group. So instead of a whole scattering of numbers, if you look at like the actual links for groups, um, Fit Pros Unite is best personal trainer. So it's facebook.com dash groups dash best personal trainer. Um, online trainers unite is literally facebook.com slash groups slash online personal trainer. And so those terms are search terms, which is part of how the groups grow because, um, because they, people find them if they're looking for other stuff because Facebook recommends you to go into the groups, but let's talk about how to get people in. So, uh, when you and Carolina both talked about the poll and something mm-hmm, yeah. that we teach people in, in OTA too is, um, and we've got a script for it, but it's the best way to get people into the group on your personal page. You say, Hey, I'm thinking of a group. Page. This is, this is based off the idea that everybody loves to give their opinion on something. Yes. You ask them. Yes. Um, and so uh, one of the best ways to uh, gain awareness around something that's upcoming is to ask people's opinion. Yeah. So, um, so we just tell people, Hey, take a poll, pick two or three names. Even if you already know what you're going to name your group, mm-hmm. still yeah. pick two or three other names and then ask people to vote on your Facebook page. And then, um, in there say, and if you want to join the group, when I start it, let me know in the comments too. Mm-hmm. You're going to have like hundred plus comments. Yeah. And then what you can go do is you can message everybody. Once you form the group 48 hours later, and invite them to join it um, and and ask them to have somebody else in there. In addition, um, in the email signature, so every email you send out, personal email, could be email broadcast, email marketing thing, in your email signature, it should be there. Um, You should be talking and inviting people into a group across all of your social medias multiple times a week. Like, like it's it's much easier to push people into group and convert them out of the group than it is to convert them directly on social media. Mm -hmm. So push people through there. On your website, um, it depends how your website's set up if you have a website, but you can absolutely mention your groups. Um, you can do an email drop if you have an email list. On an ongoing basis, though, is the most important thing. And then you can actually promote content that's going to happen inside your group, outside of your group. So you're going to say, hey, I'm doing a, a special live series or hey i've produced a special pdf to get it you got to join the group here's the link um and you can just do that stuff on an ongoing basis to continue to get people in uh do you guys have anything else to add to that that you've done that has helped grow some of your groups and keep in mind by the way you don't need big numbers like like many of you guys have big big numbers in your groups and you're doing well out of them gina uh mauricio has like 200 runners in her group and has built this like crazy online training business on the side. She's a dental hygienist Hmm. of marathon runners outside of that group of, it's like 180 people. Like you do not need big numbers. What you want is quality. Exactly. You want engagement. Another thing that has helped me is on Instagram, you have the option for adding like the one only place where you can place a link on Instagram missing your bio. And so I have a direct link to my group, to my Facebook group and every so often in a post that is relevant. And if if you want to learn more, if you want more details, Mm. if you want to, you know, more valuable information that is specific to you, you know, on a link in bio and people know to go to your bio and click on that link and ask. So you just call attention to it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I just want to, piggyback off what Jonathan said about how to get people into the group. Uh, Much better than saying, join my group. 
is to give them some valuable content but, uh, yes. and use a call to action because that's how you get engaged people. When you yeah. have a lot of followers and you have no engagement, it's usually because you're playing the follow me game, uh, mm-hmm. which is not the best way to get people to follow your social media page, your content. You want people engaging with your page and then following you because of the engagement. Uh, yeah. And then surprise, when you post things, people engage with the content because yeah. I get a lot of, I get a lot of coaches that are at 10,000, 50,000, hundred thousand, and they come to me for OTA coaching and they say, I just can't seem to get any clients. And I'm like, bro, you got 50,000 followers. Yeah. So, yeah. so getting should people be, that join, should not be an right, issue that are you. not engaged. Yeah. So mm-hmm. getting people to join your group through engagement and actual call to action. It's one of the better ways to get people to follow the group and just saying, Hey, come follow my group, please. Yeah, I, I, I hate it when people add me to their groups, like the, when they sent yes. me just like an invitation to join their group. I'm like, why yes. would I? I don't even know you. I don't even know what you do. Like, you've never even spoken oh. to me. And this is what, like, I just ignore <laughs> that. Like, I'm so, <laughs> like, it, 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 it low-key, like, bothers me. Because I'm like, no, you've never taken the time to even chat with me. So same, like, talk to people before lead, you. Lead with you. value. Make, make, lead with value and then have yes. a promise of value. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep moving because we don't have a ton of time. And I want to make sure that I get into... Um, converting people with group and content within the group. Do it. So um, when people join your group, they can uh, just join and you can approve them. They can join. They don't have to be approved. Or they can join and they have to answer a couple questions to join. Mm-hmm. These questions are a very good tool that are often not used. Um, I suggest two questions. The first one is, are you interested in free gift? And if you don't have a free gift, like literally take 10 minutes put down your three favorite recipes and call it your lean in, lean out super shake guide. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you don't even need to design it. Like literally type it out in a word doc, save it as a PDF. And that's it. Like the first, we we were laughing because the first like major ebook that I did was 101 personal trainer mistakes. I mean, I wrote that in like a night and a half. (laughs) <laughs> I saved it on, on my computer as a PDF. It had a million typos. And you know what? Over the years, that thing generated over 50,000 emails. Like wow. it, you do not need to do complicated things. So create something, anything, and actually simple is better. Mm-hmm. Um, recipe guide, shakes, uh, workout finishers actually work really well. Basically, you don't want something as like a free opt-in that's going to require somebody to change anything they're already doing. You mm-hmm. want to make sure that it's additive to whatever they're doing because you don't, somebody's, you don't ever want somebody to be like, Oh, but I already have a workout. So I don't need your four week workout. Right. Like give them like two finishers to get, you know, an extra ab, whatever workout like is way better than a four week workout. And it takes you literally five minutes to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so you say, are you interested in getting this guide? If so, put your email below. Um, that's question one. Question two is, uh, are you interested in working with me? Are, are you potentially interested in working with me to achieve X, Y, Z goal? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, no, maybe. Those are your questions. You can deal with this manually if you're not getting a lot of people joining, or you can use software. We use software called Group Funnels. It's actually unyieldly software. Like it's not particularly good to use, but it serves its function. And all that does is you install this software onto your browser. And then when everybody fills out the question, it exports their answers to a Google Sheet. And then you can go down the list of the Google Sheet. And one of the things that Amber actually does for us in the company is she goes down, I don't even know how often you do it, but uh, she goes down the sheet and uh, exports the emails and imports them into our email system and delivers a free ebook. And then they're on our email list and we follow up with them. Um, so now you're getting emails from everybody joining your group. We get like probably what, 30, 40% of people put in their email, maybe even more than that. Um, more than that, what would you say? 50, 60%? 70. Oh, most. <clears throat> yeah. It's most. Yeah. Like it's, it's a high percentage. So if you're getting like 10 people joining your group, you're going to get seven or eight emails. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a huge, so now you're actually getting the emails at the same time as they're joining your group from social media. So it's actually like a great opt-in. Um, and then if they want to work with you, if they say yes or maybe, then you could follow up immediately in the DMs and run a DM script, which if you don't have one, then you should join the Online Trainer Academy. And so um, <laughs> so that's when they enter in the group. And then as they go through the group, you should create a weekly and monthly flow of your content. And one of, um, 
John Velasquez. How do you say his last name? I don't know, <laughs> but I love him. Last night, and I, I no, still don't he's know. He's fantastic, he's, and I don't know how to say his name. The sweetest guy ever, and so smart, and crushing it with level two of the online trainer academy. And his last yes. name is at least twenty-seven letters long. Yes. And I wish that I could say it. We'll call him John V. And um, <laughs> you know, he does a very good job. Basically, like his four every four weeks, he has a flow of content. So I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's something like um, week one is value add, week two is more testimonials, week three is like talking about his program, and then week four is um, more spear posts, like like actually specific posts asking for engagement. Whatever yours is, you want to have some sort of flow that you know, okay, it's week one, I'm creating value posts this week. Okay, it's week two, I'm creating posts about this. Okay, it's week three, I need to have a couple interviews with ex clients or with existing clients that are gonna be lives inside the group. Right, like you should never sit there and think about what you want to do. You should have that planned in advance. Um, and then throughout the week, and we do this automated in our, in our Facebook groups, you just have the same posts. Like we have like winning Wednesday, what's one way that you went? What's one way that you won last week? Um, traffic like Tuesday, like, like what did you, I mean, uh, automate this like literally we have the exact same post going out every wednesday every tuesday in our group every single week we don't even think about it right and then people begin to expect it and look forward to answering it and then you need very specific calls to action so then these are called the spear posts this is basically like if you've done the founder client challenge post your your sunday script once every two weeks and literally just like a picture, I'm looking for five amazing women who want to uh, lose two sizes in the next 60 days without restricting food that they love. If that's interested, um, comment below, DM me, or send me a message directly. And now all of a sudden, everybody from the group is putting their hand up and you can engage them in, in uh, DM conversations and potentially, depending on your, your method, get them on a call or... Uh, close them directly in DMs. It's literally that, just like over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, that's that's the secrets to a Facebook group. So you want to be consistent in the group. Uh, make sure that your calls to action lead to the group. To Keto's great point, if you're on other platforms, Jonathan's point too, but if you're on platform, other platforms, especially on Instagram, my unless I have something special going on or, or I'm enrolling, my, my one link is always my group. Uh, and I've got little arrow fingers pointing down at it. Join my free Facebook group for moms who want to blah, blah, blah. Um, and, uh, and, and make sure that you have some type of cyclical process, something that, that sort of rotates with some expectancy in the group. And, well, and also, with, so you know what, also, so you know what content to produce at what time. Right. So you're never sitting there and you're saying, oh shit, should I promote this week? Should I not? Like, like right. you should know going into it, okay, I've got my 30 minute or 45 minute content production block in my schedule. Okay, um, I'm gonna educate because I know right. that this week is educating week. Right. Like right. you should know that in advance before you sit down to produce content. So, so that's, that's your group structure guys. Like knock those <laughs> groups out. They are, they're great. They're great asset to your business. Uh, and it, it really does simplify your conversion process when you sort of have all the sheep. That's, that's not a great word, but yeah, it's not a good word. With, we, yeah, we don't want to say that when you have all of the potential people that are going to work with you, uh, funneled into one place where yes. you can where you can direct content at them. Um, it's it's a matter of directing energy too, like yeah. your energy, like your focus, like like mm -hmm. whether it's a Facebook group or not, you gotta direct your focus. I mean, you think about like okay, the sun is like kind of nice and feels pretty good, or you can use a magnifying glass and focus it, and it'll yes. light stuff on fire. I mean, it's that same idea. It's that same metaphor. And you need to, you, you can't diffuse your efforts. You gotta really dial it in and figure out where you're going to be focusing in and focus in on that and make that your thing. And it doesn't mean that there aren't other things that could work. There are absolutely other things that could work. Right. Um, but you can't get distracted by that. I have one last question that I just thought of in, in the name of all personal trainers who do have groups and this is what's happening to them. What do you do when you post either a question or interaction or whatever, and you get 
crickets. <laughs> like there's just no interaction right now occurring in your group. How do you encourage that? How do you make that start happening? Well, now we're talking about, I mean, we got to get going, unfortunately. Maybe we can, we can talk about this. Like we talk about like engagement and re-engagement maybe in the next episode. Um, basically what you should have in your back pocket are a couple engagement posts and re-engagement yes. posts. There's a number of ways to re-engage a dead group and perhaps we can, we can include that. I have like a list of 10 things. Um, perhaps we can include that or uh, talk about that next time. But um, that would be awesome. basically new people in your group always infuses new energy. So if yes. you're not getting a lot of people new into your group, it can become stale. Another way is just to have like engagement stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with fitness. Hey, post a picture of your dog. What's yeah. your favorite GIF? Like, like just like get some conversations going. Um, tagging a whole bunch of people. Yep. in a post. So basically if you do like an engagement post and then you tag a whole bunch of people on it, immediately now you're going to get, you're going to prop that back up. So it's, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do to, um, to get it back going. And we can, uh, we can maybe talk about that in another episode because we got to get going. Jonathan's Yay! out. Amber, anything out. to add? No, you're good. <laughs> Hey, thanks. Thanks for tuning in to this, this episode of the online trainer show. You can find the show notes at online trainer.com slash, uh, wait, wait, is that it? Yeah. Oh my online God, right online <laughs> com slash podcast, I think is what the, or is it show or is it show podcast? Something like that. I mean, you guys have picked it up by now. We'll see you next time on episode 30 something else, whatever that is. And, uh, and Jonathan says, Thanks so much for sticking around until we actually got into the school building today. Normally, you just drop us off. You drive off, and you don't even make sure we get across the crosswalk. Uh, so thanks for making sure we got in the building today, Dad. I was just going to compliment all of us and say that that's two episodes that we've done a really good job staying on track. And then you pulled out that nonsense at the end of it. Ren's nonsense. And you know, you know what what the link is it's online trainer.com slash podcast you know that (laughs) i've said that over and over again i think i think when you need your papers again i do need my papers again i really do (laughs) like i wanted to graduate but i'm let's let's be i'm not there yet i'm just i'm not there yet Um, okay amber can we make sure that Ren has fresh papers i've got i've got the papers in this room that i'm in right now we're gonna give you new ones those ones aren't working (laughs) I don't want extra papers. Those aren't working well. You need more papers. Not in front of company. Did we hit the stop button? I don't want. I don't think. I don't so want people yet. to hear this. Uh, I think it's chast- still going. Chastisement. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up, guys. Okay. All right. Bye. Yeah. I'm, I'm logging off. All right. Bye. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>